Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is vCenter Server Install, part of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series. So this is the VCSA, or vCenter Server Appliance Installer. Um, this is on the VCSA um, installation CD. You'll download it as an ISO, and then either burn it to a CD or extract it. You have options for install, upgrade, migrate, and restore. Uh, upgrade will take an existing one and put a new one on. Migrate is purely for moving from the Windows vCenter server to the new appliance. And Restore will create a new vCSA from a backup you've already saved for something like FTP or um, SSH or any other kind of backup method available through the appliance. There's a notice there about the fact that platform services controllers are now built in and integrated. They are no longer separate entities. Um, every VCSA will have its own uh, platform services controller built in now. We'll have a quick look at the license agreement, make sure we understand and agree that. And then it's going to ask us where we're going to deploy um, this VCSA or vCenter server. So I'm going to use the IP address of a host that I want to use for this. So these are the credentials for the host we're going to deploy this to. These are not the credentials we're going to use for the vCenter server appliance. This is purely connecting to a host in order to push the OVA onto it. So it's going to ask us for a name for the VM. So I'm going to use vCenter-030 because I'm going to use a, a dot .30 IP address for this one. Uh, we've got a root password here, which is for logging on the appliance and doing any kind of administration directly on it. So we can pick a deployment size. We're going to go for tiny and default. And it says two vCPUs, 12 gig of RAM, up to 10 hosts or 100 VMs, which would be fine for a, a demo or a test lab. I've got a specific data store I want to use for this. I'm going to use thin disk because it's only a 500 gig drive I've got for this and a 460 gig appliance. So I'll pick that vCenter drive there. Next thing I need to do is pick a port group or a network to drop this on. So again, you're going to use vcenter-030 .lab.local because this is an FQDN or a fully qualified domain name. IP address is a .30. Subnet mask gateway and DNS all look correct here. It is important that you have forward and reverse lookup for DNS. The appliances use them themselves to locate services and other devices, so please make sure you've got forward and reverse DNS set up before you start. So that's an A record uh, for forward and a PTR or a pointer record for reverse. So this is stage one of the VCSA a deployment and this is deploying the appliance so we're going to push an appliance down but at this point the appliance doesn't have any configuration on it this is one of the reasons why we it's easy to do a restore because a restore is nothing more than push an appliance down and instead of asking for configuration information just restore them from a backup so I've sped it up a little bit there but that's the first stage done that's just deploying a vanilla appliance down onto a host and booting it up. The second stage, which we're going to do now, is the actual configuration. So in our case, it's a new install, but this could have been a restore if we were using a backup. So it now explains we've done stage one, we're now to stage two. It's going to ask us about time synchronization and SSH. So I always prefer to use NTP servers for this. 
and it's asking for a list of NTP servers. In this case, it's comma separated. On some VMware appliances, this is space separated. Just be careful and just make sure when you look at this that you've got it the right way around. So this time it's comma separated list of NTP servers. SSH can be enabled or disabled. It is absolutely required for vCenter server HA. I'm going to put it to enabled. I quite like the ability to um, SSH using putty or something to get to a box if I need to. So time settings are being saved now and this will synchronize and uh, gain accurate time on the appliance. And if it was a new appliance, we would create a new SSO domain, sorry, a new vCenter server. Um, but what I want to do, I want to join an existing single sign-on domain. I do have another vCenter server on dot 20. So although I'm going to build a new vCenter server, I want to use the same single sign-on domain and credentials and user accounts as before. So this is going to allow me... Um, to use something called linked mode. I'm going to have the two vCenter servers linked through a single SSO domain. So again here I'm joining an existing SSO domain from an existing vCenter server. And I'm going to join the VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program. I can just quickly review those settings. And then once I'm happy with that, I can click OK and that will commit them. And once this configuration has been written down, my second vCenter server using the same single sign-on uh, information as the first vCenter server will be complete. And I'll have an, what we call a linked mode between the two servers. I'll do another video on linked mode um, as a follow-up to this one. But for now, we're just going to deploy this. So we'll just skip ahead a little bit. See the workload control plane, that's part of the Project Pacific and the vSphere with Kubernetes. Again, we'll cover that in a different video, but that's the ability to run things like containers and Kubernetes um, on the same platform as virtual machines. So that's it, successfully completed. And I can click on the link now and log in. But for now, we'll just leave the video um, there. And that's the install complete. So that was vCenter Server or VCSA install, part of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series. I hope you found that useful and thank you very much for your time.